to my neighbor from where I come. Okay. just because of his presence and because of the record that he had for knocking people out. I reflected on a childhood experience that I had because when we was growing up, we didn't have much. But I know that we enjoyed boxing. And I can recall that, me and, that one day, me and my brothers came across a pair of boxing gloves. We couldn't afford to have two sets, so we had one. So that means you had a left and a right glove. And I took the right glove, and my brother took the left glove. Now mind you, we both were right handed. I'll come back and get you here in a So I had the right hand glove, which would allow me to use 
the bulk of my strength. And he had the left hand glove, which was normally the weaker arm. Um, and so we began boxing, and uh, if you want to call it that. And mind you, because we were both right-handed, and I had the right-hand glove, and he had the left-hand glove, that my punches seemed to be impacting him greater than his punches was impacting me. But in the midst of the process, of the boxing with the right hand and him using the left hand glove, what I began to notice was even though I have the strength, I don't seem to be knocking him out. <laughs> and so I began to think about that and God said, tell my people what made it so fascinating about this experience was how my brother was able to take a punch. And I want to tell somebody in here today, you're still here because you learned how to take a punch. <laughs> that when the enemy began to punch you with the cares of life, even though he tried to knock you out, the fact that you're still here suggests that you were able to take a punch. And I don't know if there's anybody who says right sometimes has hit me on my left and on my right side, but I'm still here today because I learned how to take a punch. Sometimes the enemy will try to put you in a place to where he tries to knock you out. He'll hit you with depression. He'll hit you with divorce. He'll hit you where it seems like you're by yourself. But why don't you look at your neighbor and say, I can take a punch? Thinking that I'm only talking about building 
the church. You gotta understand that I'm talking about building your life. That, that, that God wants to do something inside of you. He wants to build you to a greater level than where you are. But you got to understand that because he's building you, you don't get some haters. You gotta understand that some people don't want to see you come up. They want to see you stay where you are.
by their tactics. He wants you to play the victim instead of realizing you're just the vessel. And that you got the victory. He don't realize the, he don't want you to start believing that I'm closer to my better than I am to my worst. He don't want you to start trusting that everything is going to be all right. But some of us got to be careful that we don't fuss back. That we don't holler back. That we don't cuss back. That we don't hit back. That we don't shoot back. That we don't talk back. Because what we've got to understand is God is doing something. Because I got something to build. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Sometimes we've got to take stuff. But we know that we still have the victory. Follow me through this verse. The very first point I want to suggest to you is when you got a made up mind because you got to overcome this halfway mark. The Bible says, and it's in the Bible says, so we build the wall. I want to suggest to number one that in order for you to overcome your halfway mark, the text is tailored to teach us is you've got to understand but that, that it must be a plural effort. In other words, the text didn't say, I built the wall. But the text says, we built the wall. you got to understand when you're starting to build and you get your house in order, that it can't just be about me, myself, and I. you got to include everybody. just can't be in your head. It just can't be what I say and that's how it is. What you got to understand is you got to get the wife involved. You got to get the children involved. You got to get the dog involved. You got to get everybody involved so that we can build this thing together. Look at your neighbor and say, we going to do it together.
build tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to take a full effort. Yeah. But the other part of that verse says, and the wall was joined together. Hang there up. Can I suggest to you number two? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. right there in the text. Yeah. Is that you must have a participation mentality. Yeah. The Bible says that they all join together. Yeah. You gotta understand not only can it be a full effort, uh -huh. but it's gotta take somebody who's willing to participate. Yeah. Uh -huh. We got too many times people want to sit back and see how it's gonna be uh -huh. so that they can critique and criticize uh -huh. what you know. Uh -huh. <laughs>
say, palm tree. <laughs> so then as they continued to dialogue about the different trees, he called The boy that said he wanted to be the palm tree said, the thing about a pine tree is it stand tall above everybody else. But when it's faced with a storm, they break in half. <laughs> so even though they're tall and they look good, they can't stand up under pressure. I was a palm tree living in the boy who said he wanted to be an oak tree. He said, you look real good. But you feel wide and you're taking up a whole lot of space. You look good, don't you? You're real wide and broad. And when people can see you, they got to move around you because you got, you're so big. And you're so big. He said, but when you face a storm, all right. Your branches spread out real far, oh, right. which prevents you from taking any kind of root. Okay. Yeah. In other words, I don't want to be like the pine tree who breaks under pressure. I don't want to be like that old oak tree that ain't got no roots when storms come against them.
Amen. Yes. Yes, you part. You part. Come on. You don't call it as well. Amen. Amen. You should be part. Amen. We'll let me warn you. God said he's married to the backslide. That the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Amen. Will it be one of today? What a fire soon. Amen. Last but not least, will it be one that's looking to be a member of this fine church where the word is preached each and every Sunday? Will it be one? Amen. But Lord, we know that if we give it all to you, you're going to make everything all right. God, we want to ask you to bless every family that's here on today, every home that's represented on today. God, most of all, we ask you to bless our pastor, God. Bless him right now, God. Touch his body from the crown of his head to the soul of his feet. God, we ask you to bless his family, dear Lord. Just let your angels encamp around about him on today, God. And we're going to thank you for it, Lord. Lord, we're going to thank you for it now. We're going to thank you for it, God. We're going to not wait till the battle is over, but we're going to shout now, giving you praise. Giving you what you want to do in this church on today. God, we're going to thank you for it right now. It's in your name that we pray this prayer. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen. 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 amen.